Alright guys, welcome back to Formula 1 News. It's finally race week once again. A normal service has been resumed. Helmut Marko of Red Bull is calling out Lando Norris as a mentally weak driver, certainly when compared to Max Verstappen. Marko believes that certainly Verstappen will hold on to this year's championship because Lando simply can't put it together when the pressure is on. Is this true? Will Lando prove this weekend, depending on the upgrades, that he really can try and bring a comeback fight in this championship? Very much on Twitter, your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Of course, it's not just race week again. It's a triple header race week. Like, I don't really understand how we've gone here from having no races at all for ages. For some reason, we had a big autumn break. And now we have three in a row. So whatever, they make the calendar. <laughs> I don't make the calendar. We have the US Grand Prix this upcoming weekend. Then Mexico. Then Brazil. Then a couple of weeks off. And then I think another triple header to close out the season in Las Vegas, Qatar. And then, of course, going to Abu Dhabi to close out the season. Few things to mention on this. The FIA say they don't want the canon to, to expand further. Mohamed bin Suliem, can you believe it? I actually agree with something he says. He's like, look, this is probably too much for the drivers, for the teams, for the engineers, for the staff to have 25 race weekends. And he says that they won't support it. Now, if Formula One say we're doing it, the FIA kind of have to say, they don't necessarily have to, but he also said in the interview that, well, if they tell us to, we will. But, uh, you know, he doesn't want to support it and he would like to be sticking with a 24 race calendar, at least for now, whether Domeno Carly and Formula One and FOM, Formula One Management, agree they may for a few years, then they may not. That's kind of my concern. Couple of driver market things. This weekend is a sprint race, which means, of course, only one practice session before going straight into qualifying for the sprint. Then after the sprint, it's qualifying for the main Grand Prix on the Sunday. That makes things arguably even more challenging for Liam Lawson. Back in the RB this weekend, of course, he was in the Alpha Tower at the end of last season. Ricardo then kept the seat for this year. Now Ricardo's gone, so Lawson's coming in. And as he says, it is a bit of a mountain to climb. It's going to be a serious challenge for either Yuki or Lawson to, um, well, really prove themselves as being a replacement candidate for Perez for next year. Lawson has the harder task on his hands because he's coming in with no prep in this car and on a sprint weekend with only one hour of practice. So it is going to be a challenge for sure. Antonelli is going to be in next year's Mercedes. And... I do like this guy's attitude, right? Of course, he crashed out famously at Monza in that FE1 session. But, um, like, you ask him how he's going to do next year, and he says, yeah, speed isn't an issue, right? So I do love the confidence of this kid. He's like, yeah, like, I've got no problem in terms of pace. Like, I'll... I'll fight the best of them on pure pace. But racecraft and consistency and not putting in the wall, those are the things that Antonelli has to ensure don't happen. But um, yeah, I do like this kid's attitude that he's like, yeah, speed's no issue, right? And no problem on that front. It's just about executing. And to, look, Mercedes feel the same way. Otherwise, they wouldn't have put him in the car. Better to have a fast driver who has some, you know, rough around the edges, shall we say, as was for Stappen, than have a slow driver who's consistent, but um, is never going to be winning you a World Drivers' Championship. This I thought was interesting as well. These are the 2024 tyres in comparison to the 2026 set of tyres in terms of how, well, the size. Now, here it doesn't look that dissimilar, to be fair. But on this image here, you can see how relatively sizable the differences are between the 2024 tyres and the slightly thinner 2026 tyres. Now, it's not a massive difference, but it is something... It's look, you'll notice at Monza and in Japan and certainly at the final corner, which has now been removed, that chicane in Spain, how the tyres are so big, the cars are so big that through many corners in Formula One, there's only one line that you can really take. And that's just to follow the car in front. The tyres contribute to that as well. Yes, the cars are wide, but the tyres being big and bulky don't help that either. And, you know, thinner tyres would be better. That's what they're going to try and do in 2026. Is it going to make a massive difference? Maybe not. Is it something probably a positive? Probably yes. There were some interesting rumours emerging as well that Renault's engine project for 2026, which was, of course, shut down the other day, was apparently going really well. And, well, it's interesting to think about why they shut it down. Money, resources, let's say, Flavio Briatore, work in his magic. I don't know. But the reality is that apparently it was doing quite well. And Ferrari were interested in signing some of their personnel apparently they've not signed like 
any big names, but it is believed that, yeah, there are some considerations that Ferrari are looking to strengthen their engine project by signing some of the Renault guys who were apparently doing a pretty damn good job before their project was cut short. Of course, largely because this current engine isn't really working, but we are going to the Austin Grand Prix. A massive weekend for everybody involved. Of course, no Dana Ricciardo this weekend, so the only drivers that have raced in every single US Grand Prix of the 11 to date are now Lewis Hamilton and Sergio Perez, actually. So um, Ricciardo was one, but unfortunately not going to be the case for Danny this year. The winners are as follows, of course, Hamilton, Verstappen, Vettel, Bottas, probably most famously, of course, Kimi Raikkonen for Ferrari back in 20. 2018, his final Grand Prix victory, of course, in the sport. But what results should we expect this upcoming weekend? RB are in an interesting spot because Red Bull haven't performed. Their car has gone backwards and they've struggled to figure out what to do about it. That's affected RB as well in the same way that Ferrari being better this year compared to last year has helped Haas. I mean, Haas said at the start of the season they were going to be the worst car. They buy as much as they can from Ferrari and the Ferrari this year, it's pretty damn good. So the Haas is therefore also pretty good. The issue with the RB is that the RB at the start of the season was pretty good, so was the Red Bull. But as the RB or as the Red Bull has regressed, oh God, how confusing could they have made it this season with these naming things? But um, anyway, as the Red Bull has regressed, they've had to focus on their own development and trying to fix things, and it's not been clear at all what RB should do. And the trickle down of Red Bull's disappointment has also affected that team as well, which therefore affects the points that Sonoda and Ricardo have scored, not many in recent rounds, and also affects the chances of Lawson or Sonoda getting promoted right because look, Lawson could do a killer job. He could out-qualify Yuki. He could, you know, do a stellar race, maximize the potential of the car and finish P12 because that's all the car's capable of and no one seems to crash nowadays and um, especially now sergeants off the grid, no safety cars. So, you know, it's likely you can put in a stellar race and finish P12 and Yuki might be, you know, 15 seconds back in P13 and maybe that's a phenomenal performance from Lawson worthy of consideration for the Perez seat next year. But at the end of the day, you're always going to look at it and say, well, didn't score any points, did he? And that often is a problem, right? So if the car is just bad, it doesn't really matter how good you are, it's very difficult to translate that into convincing the top bosses you're the man to get the drive. I mean, if you see a drive like Colapinto had in Baku, great drive and scores a fair chunk of points, that's the type of drive that gets you noticed. He has the same drive, but let's say Perez and Sainz don't crash earlier up the field in that Baku race, then Colapinto, good drive, but only scored one point or something, right? So now it's like, oh, well, maybe it wasn't that good. So, you know, there's bias in play when it comes to point scoring. And the issue is for RB, that may affect these guys' chances because if the RB was the fourth fastest car, then I think one of these guys would get promoted. The fact that they might be the eighth fastest car or something in that ballpark and maybe faster, we'll see if their upgrades work because I'm sure they've got something planned. But um, it just affects things naturally. Nothing much you're going to be able to do about human psychology at the end of the day. McLaren, they have upgrades in the works. They can bring them if they desire. The question for McLaren is, do they bring them? Because their current car works. Their current car is rapid. It's faster than the Red Bull pretty much everywhere. Is it fast enough than the Red Bull? Because ideally, McLaren need to start picking up more one-twos. They need Lando to win, Oscar to be seconds, and then Max to be third or worse. That's how they win both championships this year, certainly if they want to win the drivers. If their car is marginally faster than Max in the Red Bull, then Lando may still win most weekends. It's certainly possible. I think Lando mentally may have turned a corner, but we'll discuss that in a second. But if the car's only marginally faster, then are they going to get one twos? Even if, let's say, you know, Oscar was to win a race, is Lando going to be second or third? That's a big deal when it comes down to the championship results. So they've got to make their car as fast as possible. The problem is they don't want to take too much risk because the current car works. There is a debate, of course, as to whether you bring a floor upgrade to the car. We've seen Red Bull, we've seen Ferrari, we've seen Mercedes bring floor upgrades to their car this season that have destabilized the car, changed the balance characteristics, and actually made things more problematic. Mercedes have then reverted what they did before. Ferrari haven't quite reverted, but they brought some changes to deal with the problems. And um, McLaren, if they bring a floor upgrade, is it going to do the same thing? They've got upgrades in the pipeline. They've got developments ready to go. Whether they'll put everything on that isn't the floor, just to, you know, just in case, or whether they'll just chuck everything on because, you know, I think as McLaren, you've got to be pretty confident you get it. And um, if they do bring upgrades that deliver what they think they will deliver, then McLaren 
are definitely capable of winning this championship in both regards with the drivers as well. If they don't deliver what McLaren think they might, that's the problem. But if there's any team that you're going to be more confident in right now to deliver upgrades that work, it's got to be the Papaya team at the moment with the Papaya rules that apparently no longer exist. Whatever. Red Bull, they have big upgrades as well. They are trying to turn the tide this season, as we full well know. Big upgrades plans this weekend. If they work, it's going to be a big deal. If they don't work, it's going to be a big deal one way or the other. The question, however, is regardless of how the cars are performing, let's say the relative performance stays the same as it has done over the last few rounds. Is Max going to win the championship? Is Lando going to win the championship? Lando the other day said Max has an advantage in the championship for a couple of reasons. One of which is that he has the lead, obviously, but that's more than just the lead. That also determines how you can race. If you're Max, you can, let's say you're ahead of Lando or whatever circumstances arise, you can make yourself very difficult to overtake and say, look, Lando, if you want to crash and you want to take both of us out of the race, then that's zero points for me, but it's zero points for you. And that favours me more than it does you. So that's a problem that Lando's got to overcome. And we know how difficult Max is to overtake on track, let alone to overtake in a championship fight. So Lando was kind of putting the pressure on Max and say, look, no, Max is the heavy favourite here. I'm the one chasing him. Like, Max better not lose it, you know, stuff like this. And and Marco has decided from Red Bull to throw the ball back in the other court and basically say, no, Lando has the pressure on because he has mental weaknesses. And this is like a classic Marco quote. But um, of course, once again, speaking from, on some regard, a Red Bull perspective. So yeah, Marco says the following, Verstappen, he's the best. He's the fastest and has the mental strength to theoretically fight for the championship more than Leclerc and Norris. So before we discuss the second part, interesting that, of course, he compares them to Leclerc. Claire and Norris. We know that, you know, Alonso, Hamilton, already world champions, they have the mental strength to compete with Max, potentially beat Max, you know, if the cars and the circumstances were correct. But Leclerc and Norris, not world champions, it is a debate as to what they're capable of. Now, I think firstly, this is on some regards a bit of credit to Marco or to these guys from Marco. My point being, he's putting Verstappen, Leclerc and Norris in the same conversation, right? He's saying, look, yes, Max is the best, he's the fastest, but Leclerc and Norris, they're close enough in terms of speed, but they don't quite have the mental resilience that Max does, which on some level is a compliment to Norris and Leclerc to put them in the same ballpark. Certainly from Marco, who is a Verstappen man, he's certainly a Red Bull man. This, however, is not a compliment to Norris at all when he says the following, we know Norris has some mental weaknesses. I've read of the rituals he needs to do to perform well on race day. So we've heard some of the things with Lando that, um, like he gets nervous before a Grand Prix, he'll have a certain routine or whatever to try and get himself in the right spot and we know that he can be certainly when the pressure is on somewhat inconsistent now I think what you tend to find is that because Norris has started to win races now he's got three Grand Prix wins under his belt you would expect a little bit as race by race goes on slightly more mental resilience I think Lando will learn that I think he'll get there mentally is he the absolute cold-blooded killer instinct driver that we have in a Verstappen in a Hamilton in all of the great champions even arguably in his teammate Oscar Piastri I'm not so convinced but I do think on some level he's probably correct in some regard here Marco in the sense that yeah, I've said it before if you gave Lando Piastri's mental I think he would become a stronger driver, right? And I think that's something that Norris has to cultivate, but that's kind of who he is as a personality as well. But um, yeah, Marco describes whatever you want to say about Norris as a mental weakness in, of course, opposition to Max Verstappen's mental fortitude when it comes down to this type of title fight. So yeah, what do you guys think about that in the comments below? Because at the end of the day, Lando doesn't have, like the gap is too big for Lando to just get by on car performance alone. Like there will be races where where Lando has to have the dog in him and make a key overtake or put in an absolute mega stint or recover from a difficult situation or whatever, right? You know, even in Baku was a good example, going from 17th to 4th, that really was a top quality drive and helped his team win the race in the process. So it's races like that under pressure where Norris will have to fight back. And to be honest, the pressure is on Lando basically every weekend because if Lando doesn't score, has a bad race, you know, loses to Max in any of the upcoming rounds, the championship is borderline done. I mean, the gap is currently 52 points with six rounds, including three sprints to go. If he loses to Max any weekends, 
the championship is borderline over. So the pressure is on Lando to deliver week in, week out. And generally he has been in terms of like overall finishing position and, you know, wins and pole positions, of course, since Miami. And, um, you know, I don't necessarily expect that to change. But if it does then it's a problem. And of course, the point for Marco is that he just doesn't have the mental strength to do it. But to be fair, it's pretty difficult to build that mental strength without having been in a championship battle. I mean, even Verstappen himself, we know, even was it Newey talked about this or something that, you know, Max was undeniably feeling the pressure towards the end of 2021 in his own performances. And that affected his driving and performance at the end of the year, to be honest, during that season. But eventually having won the championship in controversial circumstances, circumstances, then, you know, he became stronger in that sense in the upcoming years. So, you know, going through this battle, whether Lando wins or loses, is probably going to be beneficial for him in the longer term. But, um, you know, whether he's got enough this season to win, I personally am somewhat doubtful. And to your thoughts as ever in the comments. What do you guys think about this? I don't know even what this is meant to be. Is it, am I looking at Lego? Is it like a Mickey? I mean, it's Mickey Mouse is. But um, yeah, I'm not really sure. These are your trophies for the US Grand Prix. So, uh, yeah, what is this? Intrigue to your thoughts in the comments below. We have gold, Mickey Mouse helmet, emoji, Mickey Mouse race. Like, I don't know. Let me just move on because I'm just kind of confused. Uh, we often look at trophies and often I'm like, yep, yeah, that's kind of cool and interesting. This week I'm like, well... It's unique, I guess. I'll give it that, to be honest. But uh, yeah, not my favourite trophy design. I guess I'll say that real quick. There's also been some debate. When Hamilton does go to Ferrari, how's it going to settle in? How's it going to work? How's it going to work with Leclerc? How's it going to work with Fred Vasseur in charge of the team? And Toto Wolff says, like, there's no doubt that Hamilton will adapt well. It will be fascinating, though, to witness, just because Hamilton's been with Mercedes engines his whole career. Yes, the transition from McLaren to Mercedes was fascinating when it happened at the time. We see this with other drivers relatively frequently but with Hamilton it's obviously a bigger difference or a bigger deal just because of the driver that he is so yeah Wolf says he'll have no problem adapting to uh, that move to Ferrari but honestly who knows until he gets there and he's going to try and do his best I imagine to learn a bit of Italian so he is relatively well fitting in to the Tifosi and the team over there at Scuderia Ferrari already but very much interested your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and I'll see you next time.